Hello, welcome to my series about all Chopin's posthumous works. Today I have for you a very beautiful, melancholic and quite famous little waltz. Waltz in F minor. Let's listen first and then we will talk about it. Such a beautiful piece and yet never published. Why? Well, maybe uh, after I read something for you, we will all understand. I think the reason was quite, well, unusual or maybe usual and maybe even a little funny for us. This piece was published in 1855 by Julian Fontana but it was written in 1842 and in December 1842 in Paris Chopin wrote to Anna Caroline Ude about this piece such words and we quote Chopin himself as for the little waltz which I have had the pleasure of writing you, I beg you, keep it for yourself. I should not like it to live in public. Well, sorry Chopin, all the world knows this piece now, all the world. <laughs> and it's maybe not good. Uh, and later we write, we read, sorry, um, another statement of Wilhelm von Lenz, so um, one of the students of Chopin, he wrote, although he never had the waltzes Opus 70 published, Chopin valued them highly, at least the one it in F minor, so today's waltz. I often heard him play it, and how incomparably this nostalgic piece could be entitled Melanconia. Very beautiful words. And now, my friends, to the point. Chopin writes to Mrs. Anna-Karin Ude 
that he wrote this waltz especially for her and I beg you, writes Chopin, keep it for yourself. I should not like it to live in public. So he forbid her to play it in public. It's only for you, only for you. So of course we can predict and imagine how this young, probably beautiful girl have felt. How? What she felt? Oh, such a beautiful music only for me. How wonderful. And it would be so lovely. But unfortunately, we have four more dedications of this waltz. And, and, and to four different women. Actually, well, I have in my edition only one more. One is to Madame Uri and another one to Mademoiselle Elise Gavard. But we have um, all together five different autograph manuscripts. And, well, what to think about it? Probably Chopin just uh, treated this waltz, which he, by the way, wrote, as I told you, in 1842. So he was in his best years. He probably, um, he treated this like a gift for a um, woman uh, so that they, you know, they feel flattered. Probably. Well, we will never know. And this is not really interesting, but I consider it a little funny. You know, that time it was possible because there was no Facebook, no YouTube, no Internet, nothing, no Instagram, nothing. So uh, it was easier to have something like this hidden. Um, but as I said, for the music is absolutely not important. Let's just focus now on the um, analysis of this masterpiece. And everything starts like Chopin loved. I mean, with only one note. As you know, if you watch my videos or if you know Chopin's music, Chopin loves to start his music from upbeats. And we have hundreds of examples. I would not even try to start to show you. Just take all the nocturnes, not all, but most of the nocturnes or most of the etudes, at least from Opus 10. Well, not both, actually. And many, many, many other pieces. He loved to start from the upbeat. Why? Because the first note should not be accented. It should smoothly prepare us for the music that is to come. And here we have a first note. And when we hear this first note, we don't know yet what it will be. It could have been everything. You know, or... Or thousands of examples. Um, but here we have this... And now first thing which I want you to focus is how this little lonely note changes when we hear the left hand. This we don't know what it is. It could be, for example, if it starts like this. Of course, very bad piece, very bad composer. <laughs> we don't want to listen to this, but we have to know. But it also could, for example, start. Sounds a little like Schumann, but I'm improvising now. For example, or many, many examples, or for example.
Well, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, going off the topic now. Just having fun. I hope you laughed or smiled. That's good. But let's go back to uh, the business. Now, waltz in F minor. And it starts... Well, this is, uh, you know, the note that when we hear F, now we know, ah, so it was the fifth grade, the fifth step. I don't know the English word of this. I have to check. But anyway, you know, when we have the scale, we have this step. So, fifth. So then we have to go down to one. So we go down to one. And here we have something very Chopin-esque, very beautiful, uh, which is called uh, suspension. Suspended note. So we are waiting, waiting, waiting for for this note, because we want to feel good. When we have this, we, something is missing. You know, instead of the, if that, instead of the person we are waiting for, somebody else came and is talking to us. And we, you know, we don't want, we want, please disappear, we want this. So this is what Chopin was using very often. And this is what we have in the first phrase. Now, how these phrases are constructed? The, the first part A is constructed in a very typical Chopinian way. I told you, if you watch my videos, I told you hundreds times that typical Chopin phrase is short, short, long. Here we have the same. Short, short and then long right and this is the end of the first antecedent phrase and now um, let's analyze a little bit this short uh, parts first this as i told you the first short has the suspension the second short motif is exactly the same when it comes to the rhythm. And the suspension, but it has completely different melody, much more sophisticated melody. Right? And this is like short, short, and now we will have long. And now what is this long? There is no rhythm. In this long, is it? Right? So just one long line. Very curved line. But here, if you listen carefully to this, you can cut it to very small little motifs. And when we do it, it reveals the, all the beauty. I counted four different parts in this line. Now I want to show you. So first one. And this we already know, if you know Nocturne in B major. This one. Sorry. We have something like this. Right? But in a different key. But here we have... I don't think it's a quotation. I think it's just a coincidence. But anyway... And then we have the second. The third. And the fourth. So four different short little motifs, well, not so different, they are very similar, put together into one long line. The bridge, and now, what happens now? We have the consequent phrase. So it's a very regular, until now. Very regular, so then the consequent phrase. And now I play for you the consequent phrase, and you tell me what's different. The consequent phrase should be the same, but what's different? Mm -hmm. 
So, first of all, it's too long. And second of all, it's in major. But that it's in major, I'm sure you caught. Um, if you have good ear, you could hear that this is the same that we had at the beginning. But at the beginning, we have sad, melancholic, and this. This is major, this is uh, warm, right? Sunshine. But this is very natural. Chopin at that time and a little later he was using this quite a lot. One of examples that I gave in my analysis, I gave many, is this Mazurka Opus 51, 59 number one. This is in minor. And then we have major. Right? So uh, it's something new. But what is here very special is that the consequent phrase is too long because the second part of the consequent phrase is um, prolonged by another four bars uh, of this long line. So the short short is the same. Listen. Short. And now long phrase which starts from, you know, now just imagine the soprano, soprano. You know, we, we hear the soprano and that's why it's the long note. So we should also, we should let her sing a little longer. And then it goes. And this should be the end, like in the first phrase. But instead we have what? another four bars of music. So this is not regular. And that's the characteristic of the first part A. Um, there, of course, we could talk about it much more. The first, uh, it's very regular. It's just the scale going down. The second time. Ta -da 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 -da. It's very sophisticated again. So late Chopin. And then we have part B. Part B, which is very beautiful and very unpredictable. Unpredictable for our subconscious. There are a lot of surprises. And now I want to show you. The first thing that we don't expect is the sudden stop and silence with uh, before finishing the first phrase. Listen. You know, this is something like I'm talking to you and I want to say so. And I stopped. So I want to say so, something, but I saw, I stopped. And this is like this. So ex this phrase exactly is something like that. Uh, now I will uh, say it to you and then I will play and you tell me if you agree or not. So, well, what to say? Well, let's say something about this mazurka. Okay, so. As I told you, uh, this mazurka in is is in F minor and it was never published during Chopin's life. And we don't really know why Chopin never pa. And you know, today is a very beautiful day. We have a, such a fantastic sun. Ah, and this, this ah will be after that. <laughs> uh, so uh, I hope you, 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 you got it. I'm talking about something and then suddenly I stop in the middle of the word and I start to talk about completely different thing. How we do it in music. And now this ho. <laughs> this is the this is the first phrase. Let's listen one more time how funny it is. Oh, if you know the walls, it's nothing special for you. You think, okay, I, well, I know what's next. But imagine if you don't know, imagine that you don't never heard it before. What we really expect is to... For example, 
example, right? Or ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. But we got something completely else. Chopin is changing the topic. Whoa! Ah, never mind. And then he goes up. But this is one of the versions of interpretation, but it can be also another one. It is also maybe a little seductive because it is very elegant and very, you know, like playing with somebody. Uh, what will be the next one? Or maybe... And then the same. Another surprise, we have C minor, we have a dark dark. So this, the second phrase of this is dark. Modulation and everything again. it says that this is the end but for Madame Uri he writes here we have here in my edition national edition the possibility of going back to the beginning so like this which I love and I think Chopin played like this because from other waltzes that he wrote we know that he loved to come back to part A, to come back to beginning, the beginning. So I, I recommend everybody to come back to the beginning and just end this with the slow part. So that's it. Very charming, very beautiful, a little sad, yet in, in some way soothing our soul piece of music. Written for Salon, not really written for the public or for money, you know. So now I play for you this again and let's let's try to listen to this and discover all these uh, strange things that Chopin wrote here. Strange but beautiful. Well, maybe weird would be a better word. Anyway, let's enjoy this music.
Thank you very much for watching until now and see you again soon. Bye bye.